We'll concentrate only on the points necessary for our exams. Okay. Now by gaze, I mean both the eyes are moving together. Okay, both the eyes looking at looking in the same direction that is gaze. Okay. Now gazes are controlled by certain centers in the central nervous system. Let's look at these centers. For horizontal gaze, that is abduction, adduction, that is left and right gazes, it is the PPRF or the paramedian pontine reticular formation. Okay. It's the PPRF that is paramedian pontine reticular formation that controls the abduction and adduction, nothing but the horizontal gaze. Now, vertical gaze that is elevation and depression is controlled by three different centers. The most important one is the rostral internuclear, interstitial nucleus of medial longitudinal fasciculus. You can simply remember it as MLF. Okay. Now, the second one is interstitial nucleus of Kajal and the third one is the posterior commissure. Okay, look at this picture. This is the paramedian pontine reticular formation which controls the horizontal gaze. And this, this blue line over here is your medial longitudinal fasciculus. We will just revolve around these two in our discussion now. Now let's look at horizontal gaze palsy. Now, please look at this image. We know that the optic oculomotor nucleus on the same side lies on the same side and it supplies the medial rectus of the muscle. See, we know that all the extraocular muscles are supplied by the oculomotor nerve. That is the third nerve except lateral rectus by the sixth nerve and superior oblique by the fourth nerve. Okay, so the oculomotor nerve supplies the medial rectus on the same side say so let's say this is the left eye and this oculomotor nucleus is connected to the sixth nerve nucleus that is the absent absent nucleus of the opposite side via the medial longitudinal fasciculus okay so medial longitudinal fasciculus connects the third nerve nucleus of one side to the sixth nerve nucleus of the opposite side and this relays again in the paramedian pontine reticular formation. So, when there is a palsy of the PPRF, let's assume there is a palsy of the right side. PPRF on the right side is damaged. Then the eye cannot move to the right side. That means the lateral rectus of right side is damaged and medial rectus of the left side is damaged. See, both of these have to contract for you to look onto your right hand side. Now, try to look onto your right hand side. See, you can see that your right eye is moving out, abducting, and your left eye is adducting. So, both of these are relaying in the PPRF. So, when this very PPRF is damaged, you cannot look onto your right side. Okay, is it clear? It's very simple. You cannot look onto your right side because your light lateral rectus and Left medial rectus are damaged due to a damage in the PPRF. That is horizontal gaze palsy. Okay. Now, another interesting condition called the internuclear ophthalmoplegia. It is due to a lesion in the medial longitudinal fasciculus. That is medial longitudinal fasciculus palsy. We have seen that it connects the third nerve nucleus on one side to the sixth nerve nucleus on the opposite side. So, you can imagine that there is ipsilateral adduction deficit due to medial rectus palsy okay, with contralateral abduction nystagmus. There is no deficit over here. There is abduction nystagmus over here. Okay. See, this type of uh, uh, presentation is seen in a right medial longitudinal fasciculus lesion. Okay. There is ipsilateral adduction deficit due to damage to the same sided medial rectus muscle that is palsy with contralateral abduction nystagmus that is the lateral rectus is putting excessive effort to move the eye outward causing nystagmus. Okay. See, when, uh, the right side, we are seeing that there is ipsilateral adduction deficit. So, if this is the right eye, 
you can see that the patient is not able to move his eye inwards however the left eye is going out with nystagmus okay that is internuclear ophthalmoplegia why do you call it internuclear because mlf is a interneuron fiber it connects the two nuclei so it is an internuclear ophthalmoplegia okay now let's look at one and a half syndrome what happens is there is a combined lesion of both medial longitudinal fasciculus and paramedian pontine reticular formation on the same side okay you can understand what happens here see the mlf is lost okay and the pprf is also lost the mlf and the pprf so there's loss of all horizontal gaze see we know that pprf con uh, controls the horizontal gaze right we have seen that so all types of horizontal gaze are lost except contralateral abduction okay look at this picture this patient is able to see on this side but when he tries to look at the left side and when there is a left sided mlf and pprf damage the right eye does not look towards the left side however the left eye abduction is retained and along with nystagmus okay so loss of all horizontal movements except contralateral abduction because the contralateral lateral rectus is normal that is preserved okay and entire um, horizontal gaze on the same side is lost so when there is a right sided lesion the horizontal type horizontal gaze is lost on the right side but left sided abduction nystagmus is present because the lateral rectus is spared in this okay now let's look at eight and a half syndrome what do i mean by this it is seventh nerve palsy along with one and a half syndrome on the same side see you can see in this patient there is a facial palsy along with one and a half syndrome that is why it is eight and a half syndrome seven plus one eight that is how you say it's eight and a half syndrome okay now i know there have been too much of palsy gaze palsies we'll i'll just give you an easy revising uh, notation over here now, pprf palsy causes horizontal gaze palsy mlf palsy causes internuclear ophthalmoplegia pprf along with mlf palsy causes one and a half syndrome and one and a half plus seventh nerve palsy is your eight and a half syndrome okay pprf palsy is horizontal gaze palsy mlf palsy is internuclear ophthalmoplegia both of them paralyzed causes one and a half syndrome and one and a half syndrome plus seventh nerve palsy is your eight and a half syndrome hello everyone this is dr sai suguna your mentor for ophthalmology at medico app now, thanks for watching the video now we have put such videos all together in our ophthalmology app the trial version you can download from the link over here or in the description box below